All right, well, let's reset. Let's take it back up to the uh, to the top here. Let's go back in on Janu and Hunter Henry and spend a little bit more time uh, dissecting this. We kind of did a quick hit it or quit it on this, but let's 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 get settled in and let's talk about this. Okay, so you got both guys. You know, we can, we can break them individually if you want, but I think as the package is what's maybe the turnoff for most people. Obviously, you have the Hernandez Gronk thing, which I don't really want to talk about that. Like that's obviously those are two of the best tight ends to ever do it. I mean, Hernandez's time was really short and the, the off the field stuff, but Gronk's, you know, one of the best ever. So we don't really need to talk about that necessarily. But the thing we've been chasing since 2012 or 2011 is the usage of those two tight ends. And we just need these guys to be a shell of that. And I think this is this is what Belichick wants to do. He was on the forefront of this. And now you have guys like Warren Sharp and all these really smart people telling you how good 12 personnel and how effective 12 personnel can be because it gives you, tells you what the defense is doing and that you can see, Hey, they're bringing in the nickel. Hey, they're bringing in the dime. Hey, you know, this is, you know, they're in this coverage. They're in that coverage. So yeah. you can do, it tells you so many things and it's been the most effective uh, formation to run out of here for a little while. So this is clearly what they want to do now. It's not, not to say that, they don't draft a quarterback here, but these guys are perfect for what Cam Newton wants to do as well. Like shorter intermediate things in the middle of the field. They big got target. two guys, you know, big targets. They can do all sorts of different things and they've been absolutely atrocious in the red zone, uh, throwing it to the tight end. They've been trying to draft tight ends. They've been trying to figure out the tight end situation forever and they just couldn't, they had money to spend. So they went out and spent it on these guys now week to week. I don't know which guy It's probably going to be better in real life NFL and it necessarily will be in fantasy, but I still think they're, they're both going to have decent fantasy weeks. So obviously the fantasy, the, the tight end 12 is usually a trash tight end. Like, you know, that's how we Good usually mm -hmm. gain those things. I think these two guys are probably middle of the pack guys and make the middle of the pack of the tight ends a little bit more serviceable. I like that. And I think they're definitely both going to be, like you said, tight end. They're both going to be tight end ones just because of the touchdowns. And, and, uh, and, and I even think just, just volume, just, P, just PPR. They're going to be the primary Cam, pass catchers, I think. Uh, agreed, agreed. I, I'm the, you may be four for sixty in a touch, but in but for a tight end, that's huge. The stock up Cam Newton, stock yeah. up Cam Newton for and, sure. And don't you stylistically just have two different tight ends here too, which I think is fantastic. Like you have a little bit more athletic, freaky kind of guy with, and then another guy who's just a just a. OG kind of reminds you of a tight end knows where to be in the zone knows how to sit down knows how to work with a quarterback like Hunter Henry's always been really good it's just been him staying healthy if Hunter Henry's on the field he's in lock for being a, a you know to bail you out of your tight end position almost every week like in tight end premium I have a league where if Hunter Henry was on the field uh, with Philip Rivers and even last year you know I played Hunter Henry as my second flex mm -hmm. because he was he's reliable. He's going to get you those 10, 12, 14 points. If he scores a touchdown, it's going to be a great day. Exactly. Uh, so and, and John is, is just an uber athletic kind of guy. Like, it's, you know, at one point in the season for half this damn season, he was the tight end. I, I, I probably should have found the number, but he was in the top half of the, the tight end bunch and, and absolutely crushing it. Now, he really fell off there at the end. Not really sure what happened. Uh, but he was, you know, catching some touchdowns and, and doing his thing and looking looking like we've all wanted Johnny Smith to look. They brought in Ag Aguilar. They brought in Bourne. No, neither one of those guys are like high volume threat. Edelman's older. He could benefit a little bit from this. But Aguilar can stretch the field a little bit. Bourne can stretch the field a little bit. And these two guys can just eat in the middle of that field. So I, I, I think it's a. I think right now they're being probably undervalued for where they're going to be. We've been doing some mocks and it seems like John who goes a good bit higher. Hunter Henry's definitely being undervalued in my opinion. I like um, it. Which guy do you want more? Well, based on the price, I'm taking Hunter Henry. Like Casey said, I Agreed. mean, John John is younger and he's more athletic, but um, he's going to, he's going to cost you a pretty penny right this second versus obviously he's going to cost you less than he did the day before Hunter Henry signed. But that first thirty something million dollars for John o. Smith, day one of free agency, all of a sudden he was he would have cost you a first round draft pick and a in mm -hmm. a tight end premium. But then Hunter Henry jumps on the train next day and waters him down, which is my my thoughts exactly for like I said for opposing for going against. I don't want to see John o. Smith come up there and and rival freaking 
Darren Waller points. Uh, I want my Darren Waller points to only be beaten by to be exclusive. Kittle. Yeah, Kittle. I, I, I want the t- I want Kelsey there to be and Kittle. A, that's the that, only guys that, I got to worry it. about outscoring my tight end. Exactly. I don't. I don't want that. I don't. I don't want that. I want there to be a huge. Yeah. I want there to be a four four position gap between yeah. tight end three and tight end four. You right. know, we, 100, 100 points. We haven't even touched on the ability for them to run 13 personnel and trot Nikhil Harry out there as their third tight end <laughs> the position. He was meant to play. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Stock down to kill Harry. That's for sure. And all this, they brought in any guy that they, almost every skill position player in free agency. I, I do want to like big co, you know, you, you mentioned it there. You said it for a second, but you know, cam, it's easy to hate on cam. It's easy to pile on cam. Maybe he's not even the starter. Maybe he does suck again this year, but I think there's a lot of value in super flex on cam for just a late round stab scoop up. And he could, there was in the beginning of the season like last night when cam, cam was looking all right. And I think they're going to run cam a little more. I think you're going to see Belichick loves old school football. You're going to see them getting, hopefully maybe they could get a little bit out of Dalton Keene playing that H back position. They can get a bunch of bigger running backs involved. They, they, they've, they've been linked to a Leonard Fournette and they were, they were linked to Chris Carson at one point, trying to get mm-hmm. another big bruiser in there. They, they want to play a different style of football than everybody else is playing. You know, Belichick would play that wing T if he fucking could. And you know he's, he might he might just try this year. So I, I like you know, it. If you if you would want to give yourself a, an ability to open your mind on Cam Newton, you go go YouTube. I am athlete with Brandon Marshall, and uh and watch. I mean it's an hour and a half, and I watched the first two minutes, and I it was like nine thirty at night, and I was like, damn, I'm about to be up to eleven. <laughs> like there was there was no chance I wasn't watching the entire hour and a half in one sitting. Um, Cam's a beast. Cam's an absolute beast. Yeah, and I mean the 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 uh, Tommy could couldn't barely make that Patriots team with the supporting cast look serviceable there, and and he he was like, "Fuck it, I'm out." Cam comes in, not playing for a little while, comes in, gets COVID. Now you know COVID fog is a real thing, and and was foggy there for a little while. And the Patriots were just hot fucking garbage last year. Defense should be better. They brought David Andrews back. They got like a uh, whole at, team at coming back who opted out from COVID. Right. They got yeah, well. Uh, they got the whole defense coming back, but literally, like I was in the I, in the interview, the um, I am athlete with Brandon Marshall. Like Cam gives Cam gives you a breakdown. He's basically they break down the first couple games because he was a stud, and then Brandon Marshall and Chad Johnson's on there with him, and Fred Taylor's on there with him. Old Jacksonville Jags running back, and they were like. So week one, you do this, you run the ball, you crush week two, you throw for 400 yards and you crush, you lose to Seattle in grand fashion. It was an awesome game. And then week three, you do this. And then all of a sudden wheels fall off and the whole thing looks terrible. What's going on. And they kind of take it week by week for a minute. And Cam's just honest. You know, he had a just, fumble, right? At one of just, those early games, just very Seattle. early game, they could have kicked Seattle, the ball. They fumbled. No, I think it was the Bills. I think they could have beat the Bills. Bills. They Bills. were going to beat right. the Bills, right. and he fumbled it. Uh, so, I mean, they just – the honesty coming out of Cam was cool. Uh, the respect that he had for the Patriots and what happened last year was cool to hear him talk about Bill Belichick for a little bit and this and that and not throwing any teammates under, <laughs> under the bus when they tried to say, well, you didn't have anybody to throw to. It was the other guy. It wasn't like, yeah, Nikhil Harry sucks. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't that at all. It was, it was really cool, man. I, I yeah. challenge everybody to listen to it. Cool. Watch it. It's on video. All right. Well, that's going to wrap that sit down up. Hold on. I got I got a question, though. Oh, God. Um, <coughs> so looking at the, the, the tight ends, right, in uh, going in ADP, right, you got like the top seven with, you know, George Kittle, Travis Kelsey, Darren Waller, Mark Andrews, Hawkinson, Fant, throw Kyle Pitts somewhere in there. And you've got, you've got seven tight ends. The eighth guy is, is Dallas Goddard. And then it's Hunter Henry, Irv Smith, Evan Ingram. Now this is all pre um, free agency, free agency. So do you see either of those guys creeping up like above Goddard into that mix? I mean, they could easily creep above Goddard into that mix. I mean, we all really like Goddard, but we don't know what the hell the Eagles are going to be doing next year. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm not as thrilled about Goddard when I got a Jalen Hurts um, who's going to have maybe just as many rush attempts as he has pass attempts throwing him the ball. And we've seen we've you know, the, the thing about the back half of the tight ends is they're always fucking different. You know, they're always moving around there. I mean, Zach Hurts could easily be back up in there if he lands in the right spot, uh, you know. 
So I, th I think, but I think Johnny and Hunter Henry have an opportunity for one of them to be up a little higher than, than we're thinking and, and the other one to be in the middle of the pack uh, or low middle of the pack and help slow this. The, the tight ends are going to slowly come around where tight end 12 isn't so bad anymore, um, where it's, you know, everybody might have one and to much of, you know, big coach chagrin there, but it's not, it's, it's still going to be a big point differential between those top couple and, and the bottom ones. So 